Hi, I'm Devin, and welcome to Performance Max for Developers. This is the first episode in an eight episode series about creating Performance Max campaigns with the Google Ads API. We're going to be covering a lot of information in this series, so stay tuned. Before I go any further, don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all the latest videos and uh, amazing content we have coming your way. So, without further ado, let's dive into Performance Max campaigns. Performance Max, or as I'll refer to it, PMAX, it's a new goal-based campaign type that allows advertisers to access all Google Ads account inventory from a single campaign. And what's best of all, it finds more converting customers across all of Google's channels. Let's, uh, let's break this down a little graphically. I'm, I'm really into graphics, so I think this will be helpful. What is Performance Max from a developer perspective? Well, basically, let's look at this as an input-output operation, right? On the left side of our screen here, we've got all of the inputs that we need to set, right? The goals, the budget of our campaign, the settings, what sort of assets we're going to apply, the targeting. We're going to bundle all of that up into our Performance Max campaign. We'll feed that into the Google Ads uh, system and using some advanced automation technology, the Google Ads system will then create ads dynamically for you using all of the assets and other inputs that you provided and then serve them on the channel that's most likely to convert. So this could be any channel, YouTube, display, search, discover, and so forth. And what's great about this is that the system will also optimize your budget to get the highest ROI based on you know, whatever your bidding strategy is, whether it's maximizing conversions or maximizing conversion value. But we'll get into all of that in a later episode. So let's break this down a little further. All right, so as far as goals, this is really the first thing you want to be thinking about as you start planning your Performance Max campaign. What do you want it to do? Do you want someone to complete a purchase? Do you want people to add items to their cart, visit pages, download apps, on and so forth? Budget and settings, this is your campaign budget and your campaign settings. Things like, how much do you want to spend on this campaign? Uh, what type of bidding strategy do you want to use? Uh, shopping settings, if it's a retail campaign. As far as assets go, here are the five different types of assets you can use with PMAX campaigns. Text, image, YouTube video, call to action, and media bundle assets are all acceptable. And the next episode is all about assets, so stay tuned. And then finally, targeting. These are the cues that you're providing Google Ads in order to best serve ads to the best people at the best time on the best channel, right? Uh, which URLs are you directing them to? What products do you want them to see if it's a shopping campaign? You can also provide something called audience signals to give Google an indication of what types of audiences are most likely to convert. So if we break this down, we're, we're gonna start getting into the API right now. Uh, there's really two things that are going on here. The top, what, what is this campaign looking to accomplish? And this is really going to be set by your campaign and your campaign budget. And then on the bottom, we have signals to direct the automation technology. And this is really going to be held within your asset group. Now, taking this a step further, there's really a new paradigm in advertising within Google Ads with when you use PMAX. And what I mean by that, there, there was a, something I said in the very beginning, right, that it can use all of your inventory. And this is kind of a new paradigm shift, right? Instead of creating individual ads, you know, where you select the channel, you select uh, the assets that go on every single ad. Instead, what we're starting to move towards is pulling inventory from your account to generate those, those ads. And what that does is it streamlines the entire process. So to give you an example, let's look at assets. And like I said, we'll get into assets in great detail in the next episode. But with assets, you want to create an asset library that you can draw from. And then whenever you're creating a PMAX campaign, you just indicate within that campaign which assets should be used for that particular campaign. And then the same thing goes for goals, right? There are a number of goals that are held at the customer level. And what you can do is actually just apply a subset of those and specify which of those should specifically be used for this campaign. And this is a good time to mention that in order to use Performance Max campaigns, 
you have to have at least one conversion action on your Google Ads account. I'll explain why that is in the final episode when I explain how to create these conversion actions at the campaign level. So here, again, this is that same diagram, and this is a very simplistic, high-level view of what we're going to be creating in this series. And you can see this is a lot more complex. There's a lot going on here, and that's because Pmax is so powerful. There's a lot of different options and configurations, and we're going to walk through all of those different options, or at least a lot of them in this series. So as you can see, this is actually ties pretty closely to what we saw on the last page. On the left, we have our asset library in the middle in that uh, light green uh, dotted box. Uh, we've got the asset group campaign, a campaign budget, and then we can add some custom configuration options by setting our campaign goals, as well as some custom campaign criteria. I'm going to be walking through some code in just a minute that really goes through this entire process, right? And in that code, there's four requests that we're going to make that do this entire thing, the whole kit caboodle, right? Uh, number one, we have, we're going to create some assets. Number two, we're going to issue what's called a bulk mutate request. And if this is something you're not familiar with, I'll link some documentation down below in the description to help you understand this. But effectively, the idea here is that we're going to take the entities that are required for a valid serving Pmax campaign, group them together, and issue a single request to create them all at once. Those include a campaign, a campaign budget, one or more asset groups and some related entities, uh, such as something called an asset group asset, which is how we link our assets to our asset groups. Uh, then we're going to issue a request to, to actually set those goals, those custom campaign level goals that I was just talking about, and also add some campaign criteria. So this is what we're calling the interactive guide. And this is a brand new tool. And there's a, there's a couple things we're trying to accomplish with this. Uh, one, we wanted to give you the ability to explore the code and really access all the different parts of it very easily all in one place. So for example, here you can see this is the overview. This is you know, our run example method or main method in, in other languages. Here we're using Java. But if you want to see how to create a campaign budget, you go here. Anything that I enter in here will appear in the code. You know, some simple variable substitution that could be really useful, but there's a lot of other options too. Uh, for example, you'll see toggles that really control how the code acts, what it does, and so forth. Uh, but with that, let's head back over to the overview method. And I just want to walk through those steps that we just looked at, right? So here you can see this is the method to create those assets. Uh, here we're creating a bunch of operations and then adding them to that bulk mutate request, which will issue create our valid serving Pmax campaign. And then finally at the bottom, uh, we'll use the campaign resource name from that request to uh, add some custom campaign criteria as well as some campaign level goals. There's a lot of information still to come, so stay tuned. But before I go, let me walk through what we're going to be talking about throughout this series. So in the next episode, I'm going to be talking about assets what they are, how to really think about them in the context of Pmax campaigns, and how to create them. Next, we'll move on to that bulk mutate operation, the first half of it, I'll, I'll call it, and we'll create a campaign budget and a campaign. I'll walk through some of the requirements, configuration options, and so forth. Uh, then we'll take a, a quick break to talk about Performance Max Retail, and this is a good opportunity for me to say, in this series, we'll be covering both standard and retail Performance Max campaigns. And some of the episodes, like episode four and episode six, are strictly related to retail campaigns. Uh, if you're not interested in retail campaigns, uh, you can feel free to just skip those episodes. In episode five, we'll move on to asset groups, which are really a, a mechanism to hold a bunch of different assets and attach them to your Pmax campaign. I'll explain the different options we have in terms of creating and configuring them and uh, what, you know, what sort of considerations you want to take into account when making those decisions. After that, we'll move on to listing group filters in episode six. And you might have heard of product partition trees. I'll, I'll kind of use these interchangeably until I explain 
to what the difference is, but effectively I'll explain to you how to create product partition trees to let your PMAX campaign know which products you want to target and which ones you should exclude for the purposes of serving ads. Next, we'll move on to asset group assets, which as I mentioned, are the mechanism we use to link assets to asset groups in our PMAX campaign. And then finally, I'll finish up with campaign conversion goals. And I just want to take a minute here to call something out, which is that even though campaign conversion goals is the last item in this list, the last episode, it's really the first thing you should be thinking about. And I said that earlier, but the reason for that is a campaign conversion goal really defines what that campaign's doing. So if you're looking to drive sales or drive people to visit your website, download an app, whatever it may be, you should probably have that in mind as you're thinking about all of these other decisions. So I've included this last just because it's kind of how I, I fit it into the workflow of the code example, and I'll explain why that is at a later time. But it's something you want to keep in the back of your mind as you're working through these other sections. With that, I'm really excited to share all of this amazing content with you, so stay tuned for the next episode when we dive into assets.